Ireland is full is a slogan that has been adopted by a grassroots anti-immigration protest movement in Ireland. While the slogan itself predates the current protest movement, it has become a rallying call of a movement that started out as just a localised protest in an inner city Dublin area, East Wall, but now has sprawled into a nationwide protest movement with demonstrations up and down the country now occurring for and against large-scale immigration. These protests and their rallying calls of Ireland is full, or the counter slogan of Ireland for all, has rapidly become the biggest issue in the country and the daily subject of discussions on radio shows, podcasts, news programmes, debate shows, newspaper articles, and even in the halls of government. However, just because something trends, goes viral, or even becomes a movement, doesn't necessarily mean it's true. So instead of just shouting slogans like Ireland is full or Ireland for all, how about we actually attempt to answer the question that started all of this by actually looking at the arguments made by both sides so we can find out once and for all, is Ireland full? Firstly, let's look at the arguments made by the anti-immigration protesters who say that Ireland is full. Their key points are that Ireland is in the midst of a housing crisis, a homeless crisis and a cost of living crisis. So the importation of huge numbers of people greatly exasperates these already chronic issues. They say that these policies have become detrimental to the Irish people and that they should be given priority in their own country. But do these points hold up to scrutiny? Well, last year Ireland had 13,300 applying for asylum, which is the highest figure since records began. For context, the second largest figure is 11,600 in 2002. This record high figure is greatly compounded, however, by the fact that 70,000 Ukrainians were given refugee status, meaning a total of 83,000 people have arrived in 2022 seeking refuge. With a population of just 5 million, that means that with people just seeking asylum, Ireland took in an increased 1.66% of its population in one year. Now this would be a monumental challenge for any country to deal with, but housing and its availability to buy or rent in Ireland is and has been in crisis for quite some time. Housing was the number one issue in the last election and current figures show why this is the case. Ireland has one of the lowest number of dwellings per 1,000 people in the developed world. The median price of housing has risen to levels higher than that of the boom in 2007. House prices have increased 73% in the last decade, while wages have only increased 23%, pricing people out of the market. The government has consistently fallen short and revised down its desired number of houses to be completed each quarter. There are 60,000 people on social housing waiting lists. Rents have increased 13.7% in the last year alone, with the national average being 1,700 per month. Supply of rental properties is also in chronic shortage and is down 20% on this time last year. Here is a video highlighting the extent of the crisis showing an insane number of people in line attempting to just get a rental opportunity of a three bedroom in Dublin. On top of this there are 10,000 people homeless with at least 3,000 of them children and more young people than ever are forced to live at home with parents as the average age of leaving home now is 28. All of these shortages and price issues has meant that the people who arrived here and have been granted asylum are also unable to be given appropriate accommodation. This means that a staggering 30% of Irish hotels are being used to house asylum seekers and hundreds of B&Bs and guest houses are doing the same. This is expected to be a hammer blow to the tourist industry that Ireland is incredibly reliant on, causing a knock-on effect of lack of revenue for both the public and private sector. And that doesn't include the hundreds of millions of euros already spent on housing refugees in hotels and this number is expected to grow into the billions, if it hasn't already. Despite all of this, there was still a shortfall of 19,000 beds in March this year. Asylum seekers are being housed in old office buildings, huge migrant centres like City West taking in hundreds, unsuitable fire hazards and even in tents during the sub-zero winter months. They are also being sent to small rural towns and villages whose services are unable to cope with the overnight increase in population. And recently, students in both Cork and Sligo had their accommodation given to house migrants, leaving many young students in doubt as to whether they will find somewhere to live. So these are essentially the arguments made by those who are saying Ireland is full and cannot deal with this kind of influx of people. So what kind of arguments are the other side making? Well, one argument the Ireland for all side is making is that they say Ireland is not full because we are a rich country with a relatively low population density and a historic population that was far higher than we have now. Housing an increased number of people should not be an issue. 
Ireland once had a population of over 8 million when it was incredibly poor and it was never portrayed as a crowded place at all. Combine this with our increased wealth enhancing our ability to provide for ourselves and others, this makes the claim that Ireland is full with a population of just 5 million seem quite absurd. A common argument that has been made by multiple politicians and journalists is that if Ireland had a similar population density to that of the Netherlands, then we would have a population of above 45 million. Now I've been to the Netherlands multiple times, and as you can see from this footage, once you get outside of the cities, there's no shortage of wide open green spaces. Ireland also has a higher GDP per capita than the Netherlands, so funds should be available to deal with these issues. So for Ireland with its population of just 5 million to be in an unprecedented housing and homeless crisis and constantly teetering on the brink of collapse with a series of governments providing nothing but lazy short term slapdash fixes to every issue and then lurching to the next crisis is evidence that Ireland as a landmass isn't full but it's just being spectacularly mismanaged. This is the key argument the pro-immigration side is making. The problem isn't capacity, it's management. Another example they use is that there are currently over 100,000 vacant properties in Ireland, many of which could be used or brought up to spec for a fraction of the cost of building new homes. They also highlight that the construction of new homes themselves is nowhere near the rate it needs to be to be able to provide for the people here, never mind the people seeking asylum. So basically, the Ireland is not full or Ireland for all side are saying that Ireland as a nation should be able to provide refugee status for those seeking it and have an ability to get a home for those already here and that this crisis is one created entirely through incompetence and corruption. So who is actually correct? Is Ireland full? Well, while both sides are attempting to answer the question of is Ireland full, they are answering in two very different ways that prove themselves right but also doesn't disprove the other side. So when the Ireland isn't full or Ireland for all people say that we have a low population density and with our high levels of wealth we should be able to provide for more people if the housing sector was competently managed, they're right. But when the Ireland is full people say that there's a chronic shortage of housing, homelessness is ripe, people can't afford mortgages or rent and the increase in supply cannot meet the increase in demand, so migration is hurting Irish people and migrants alike, they're also right. You see, the Ireland is not full side is arguing what Ireland could be and should be. They're saying that a crisis like this is something that Ireland should be able to manage. They're making an argument based on future potential if managed efficiently. The Ireland is full side is saying that things as they exist now cannot cope with the current migration levels and we need to focus on the here and now and not what people would like reality to be but what the reality of the situation actually is. So both sides are proving themselves correct while simultaneously not at all disproving the other side. And this is the key flaw with the slogans of Ireland is full or Ireland for all. A mere question of capacity doesn't answer any of the deep philosophical questions and ideas that surround the issue of immigration. I mean, even if the issue of capacity was 100% addressed, do you think either side would change their tune? For example, if 5 million houses just magically popped up all over the country and housing was suddenly affordable and available to all, do you think the people against mass migration would suddenly support the importation of millions into Ireland? A dramatic change in their culture, their identity, their way of life, the places they grew up becoming unrecognisable and becoming a minority in their own country? Of course they wouldn't, because these are the big issues and questions surrounding immigration. And the slogan Ireland is full totally ignores these. On the other side, if the housing crisis was made infinitely worse, housing availability plummeted, all new construction stopped and prices skyrocketed going up 20x, do you think that the Ireland for all crowd would suddenly adopt what they call far right positions and call for a closing of the borders because we clearly can't cope? Of course they wouldn't. They openly accept and lament the reality of the current housing crisis but still act like you're quoting from Mein Kampf if you even posit the idea of a cap on migrants. So what is the solution? Well, I think the best solution is for as many people as possible to drop the slogans and start asking themselves the big questions. And to me, there is no bigger and more relevant question in 2023 than the question of what is Ireland? Who are we and what do we wish to be? Are we a nation who prides itself on its altruism and kindness? A nation that attempts to actually live up to the pretty little picture we often paint of ourselves as a land of 100,000 welcomes? A model global citizen who acts as a small cog in the wider global community and works for the betterment of others as much as ourselves? 
Or do we wish to be a unique and proud nation that wants to be primarily motivated by its ability to carve out its own destiny and to achieve greatness? The preservation of its beautiful and distinct culture and a nation that puts the betterment and prosperity of its own people as its top priority? These are the questions that need to be asked. Ireland as a country is at something of a crossroads right now. The two main political parties are losing support and Sinn Féin is now the biggest party in the country for the first time in a century but its base is totally out of line with the party on what is becoming the biggest issue in the country, immigration. All of this is creating an actual opportunity for change. For as long as I've been aware, the biggest complaint in Irish politics has been a lack of a real alternative with the two major parties simply being two sides of the same coin and any opposition that gets into government quickly bends to fit their agenda. I mean, it's not a coincidence that Sinn Féin's rise has seen them move closer to the big two in tone. So I encourage everyone out there to ask of themselves and then any politician they can, the question, what is Ireland? Get a real answer about what this country is and what the people actually want it to be. If enough people do this, then we can get real answers, real stances, real goals and real principles to drive us forward instead of just lurching from crisis to crisis with no single motivating principles or philosophy. If we drop the slogans and take advantage of this unique opportunity, then the Irish people might actually be able to provide themselves with something they haven't had for my entire adult life. A choice.